let's just go back to uh, Jackie Rowland, uh, who's been uh, in Benghazi there monitoring what are those uh, tumultuous scenes um, in the rebel stronghold. Uh, Jackie, uh, just talk us through what's been happening there. What's been happening here really is that after um, the breaking of the fast and after the evening prayers, people started to come out onto the streets. I mean, clearly there were these huge scenes of celebration 24 hours ago and when the news came through that the uprising inside Tripoli had begun. Here, the kind of jubilation, the first celebratory shots, the first chanting began with the news that Saif al-Islam, Gaddafi's son, the very prominent son, had in fact been captured in Tripoli. Um, after that, there was just a more uh, ecstatic reaction with each new piece of information. Um, the news that uh, Mohammed al-Qadhafi, another son, had handed himself in. But I have to say, Darren, that some of the most, the moments of the, the, the most um, heightened sense of joy and ecstasy, ex exhilaration here among the people in the square, young men, also women, I mean, there are thousands, possibly 10,000 people here were the moments when they saw broadcast on the walls of a building to the side of the square television images of people celebrating on the streets of Tripoli. That for them was really the key moment. I would say if I had to say one key moment this evening, the kind of freedom from the rule of Muammar Gaddafi that people here in Benghazi have been experiencing now for six months. They finally saw that they had exported their uprising and that they were sharing it with their fellow countrymen in Tripoli. And for the people of Benghazi, that moment was sweet indeed. Uh, Jackie, there have been uh, a few moments of defiance from the regime tonight. Uh, we had Musa Ibrahim, the uh, government spokesman, talking, uh, asking NATO to cease all operations and, and to let all parties sit uh, and talk peace. We also had that uh, uh, two or three garbled audio messages from Muammar Gaddafi himself. How did those moments go down with the crowd behind you, Jackie? Well, really, uh, people here in Benghazi see those statements as the increasingly desperate rants, really, of people who have totally lost the plot. Um, I have to say that 24 hours ago, when Muammar Gaddafi made his first speech, there was anger at that stage, and we actually had reactions from senior members of the National Transitional Council really condemning Muammar Gaddafi for trying to present himself as a man who uh, respected and embodied religion and the cause of Libyan nationalism. I have to say that the last couple of speeches by Gaddafi himself and by his spokesman Musa Ibrahim, the, um, the opposition here haven't even dignified those with a response. In fact, people here in Benghazi have started, started to liken Musa Ibrahim. If you remember um, back to the war in Iraq almost 10 years ago, the spokesman for um, Saddam Hussein, who became known as Comical Ali, People here in Benghazi are getting to the stage that they're seeing Musa Ibrahim and the, st the statements he's making as being so far out of kilter uh, with reality that he's actually begin becoming seen not so much as a figure of hatred, but really as a figure of ridicule. Uh, and Jackie, uh, one, uh, one uh, very real moment, of course, is, is that the speed of the rebel advance on the capital has surprised many people. From where you are, Jackie, you've been in Benghazi for some time. Just talk us through how they've managed to do this in such a very short space of time. Well, if you like, this climax of the efforts has been very swift and maybe has taken people by surprise. But I should point out that it comes after many months of stalemate. When I was first in Benghazi six months ago, events seemed to be moving quickly. Many people here thought that we would just keep powering west all the way to Tripoli. But obviously, on this particular front, things ground to a halt near those major oil towns of Brasla, Nuf and Brega. I think the reason that things have moved swiftly now have been um, are several fold. Obviously, airstrikes by NATO, NATO which first entered this conflict with a mandate to protect civilians, but which has increasingly been acting as the air force of the opposition army. Its um, airstrikes have been absolutely crucial. As well, we believe that during these months or weeks of comparative stalemate, there has been an opportunity for rebels, particularly those in the West, 
who are the ones who are now into Tripoli itself. It gave them an opportunity to build up supplies of weapons and ammunition. In the past, we've seen rebels making gains on the ground, but unable to hold um, territory that they had actually captured. Clearly, what we've seen in the last couple of days has been the ability of the rebels to actually capture territory and keep it, and keeping the territory all the way to Tripoli. And it was that success on the ground that emboldened the people of Tripoli um, to finally voice their opposition and to openly rebel in the streets of the capital against Colonel Gaddafi.